Hello everyone, welcome back to Football Unplugged with me, Satvik. Uh, today we are doing a very special episode and a very interesting at that. Uh, we are going to have a discussion on the potential and you know completed transfers of the top two of the Premier League last season in Arsenal and Manchester City. And I have a very special guest and a very special friend with me. And um, if, if you follow Kostab already, you might have already seen that uh, we've already done an episode on the ideal transfers for United and Liverpool. Uh, so before moving ahead for people who are not uh, aware or people who do not know Kostab, Kostab, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Firstly, Satwik, thank you so much for having me on your channel. Uh, so my name is Kostab and I run this channel called Kostab's Corner, where I post uh, reels about football. You know, some interesting stories, some anecdotes, as well as uh, long-form content, you know, like the video that you mentioned uh, with yourself. So, yeah, really excited to be here. Thank you. Perfect. Okay, uh, so how we're going to do this bit is we're going to talk about both the teams separately, wherein uh, mm -hmm. we'll be beginning with Arsenal and then moving on to City. And just, you know, again, no set structure. We'll just be discussing as to, you know, what should be the transfers for those particular teams and you know what are the sort of additions that we feel we can do for the coming season as well. Uh, so again, starting with Arsenal and then moving to the Premier League champions. Uh, I think if, if, if I have to personally analyze what Arsenal did last year or what Arsenal did last season, I think ultimately why they sort of fell down or why they sort of, you know, uh, their you know, performances started slipping down, I think, was also... Bottled it, you mean? With, with? Hello? Bottled it, you mean they bottled yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. I I, I, <laughs> I I did not want to use the term bottle, but sorry, <laughs> Arsenal fans, yes. So, how they bottled yeah. it, I think a lot of that was down to fatigue and at the same time, I think nothing compares to the score depth that City has and which ultimately, mm -hmm. you know, was, I think, one of the major reasons. So, I think that was one factor. Costa, what do you think? You know, where did it all go wrong for Arsenal, according to you? I think, uh, you know, I, I agree with your, with your point that uh, they lacked squad depth. Um, I also feel like um, this team is being a really young team. They sort of lack that experience. Um, you know, when they go into that final stretch of the season, being, you know, considerably clear... I think a more experienced team would have gotten over the line, but the I think the sheer number of young players and the, it being the first time they were in this position where, you know, it felt like they had the title in their hands. I think that sort of put additional pressure on them. I think, you know, when you're a younger team or you're chasing a title for the first time after a really long time, I think it's a lot easier when you're the chasing team rather than the one that being chased. Because, you know, when you're being chased... It's a lot more difficult, but when you're doing the chasing, you have some target in mind. You have someone to look at their performance and sort of, you know, have that extra motivation. So, I think that was another factor that played on uh, the minds of these, this Arsenal team. I completely agreed. And I think in a lot of big matches, I think especially with the one against Liverpool as well, I think yeah. that I think changed change it completely. I think that uh, Shaka, you know, instigating Arnold exactly. and then, you know, Anfield just, you know, roaring up to what we know Anfield as. So, I think that sort of completely changed, right? And, you know, talking about score depth here, I think just the fact, of, obviously, you know, uh, Saliba got, got injured and, you know, mm -hmm. ho holding, even though he's a very good defender, but obviously not the quality of what, you know, a William mm -hmm. Saliba was. But at the same time, I I thought Arsenal, throughout the season, I thought Arsenal is one injury away from just bottling it down. And that was true, even true. before, you know, Saliba's injury. So, when I was thinking about the transfers that Arsenal need to make, Arsenal needs to make, I think more of it has to do with squad, squad depth rather than, you know, mm -hmm. changing personnel in the starting 11. Because I think in the starting 11, they had a very solid foundation of players who knew what they were doing and the role that they needed to play, right? Uh, and, you know, discussing the transfers that they've already made, I think the Harry Kane would be the direct replacement for a Granit Shaka. Uh, and if Thomas Partey also departs, that is a position that they probably have to fill. Mm -hmm. But I think the two signings of Timber and uh, Declan Rice, I think, is a 
are both extremely extremely good signings and i think they'll they'll be covering aspects for them that they you know i think definitely needed right so i think mm-hmm. they they've sort of covered two positions very nicely but i think again yaar one one position that i still think arsenal might be missing a trick here or still need to work upon i think is uh, a attacking midfielder or a very creative midfielder right i think mm-hmm. again if in a scenario odegaard gets injured i don't see anyone even being 50% or 30% of what odegaard has to offer right uh, they signed mm-hmm. viera with an expectation that you know he would be extremely brilliant or you know would be a good replacement for odegaard but at least for the first season what i thought was you know he wasn't up to the mark and i think i think mm-hmm. in the recent interview viera also agreed to that so what what do you think about arsenal's you know complete situation i think you know as of now uh, you know based on the signings that they've made especially timber rice and havertz i think mm-hmm. you know what i see them doing is sort of trying to emulate the city formation of that you know three at the back with like four in midfield and a front three so you know i could really very easily see you know zinchenko sort of coming into the midfield alongside declan rice with maybe odegaard and havertz in front of them and a front three of jesus saka on the right and martinelli on the left i think you know that's something that they are angling towards cuz otherwise I, i don't really know what havertz does because Correct. he's not really like a traditional number 9 nor is he like super attacking uh, you know super creative in the sense that you know he can play in that number 10 position so i think you know the way i see it is he's going to be uh, sort of play the role something like what gundogan did you know making those late runs into the box and adding more goals from midfield so i think uh, apart from that even the addition of timber also adds another aspect to their defensive line because um, i think saliba is great on the ball and so is gabriel but timber in particular I think I was I the stat I saw about him is that he was in the top you know top 2 percentile of uh, defenders you know who were able to get the ball out of the defensive line so those progressive carries into the midfield I think he added another dimension to the Arsenal attack and yeah I think overall they are once again going to be the ones who will be challenging city for the title and again you know agreed when you say the type of defender timber was and i think that was the role that you know rudiger did brilliantly when he was playing under tuchel yeah. for a one or a, for a couple of seasons where that you know physical drive from the you know defensive position i think it's very important so completely agreed with that and uh, you know the the issue of havertz is you know very is a very interesting signing yaar honestly if you ask me you know, as you've said i don't know what havertz brings to the table mm. in terms of position right but i still have that gut feeling he would probably be one of the better signings that Ars- arsenal have done just have this gut feeling that you know havertz would be a brilliant addition i don't know where he plays i don't know what system i think i agree when you say you know he he might play a 3 2 4-1 formation right yeah. uh, but at the same time then you know white misses out is another curious thing because either mm-hmm. you know the three center backs Uh, out of them only two play and then white goes as the third center back or then white does right. not play and you know that is a very interesting situation yeah, yeah. for them but i think a good problem when when it comes to arteta good problem to have if i must say right uh, apart from that you know even in terms of creative midfield right where what i think was you know I, what i still think is a problem that they need to solve one player that i think Arsenal have already identified and which I also think could you know fit is Mohamed mm-hmm. Kudos from Ajax I think uh, you know looking at the stat that he had looking at a, a couple of matches that he played in the last you know not you know not rigorously followed him but I think uh, having mm-hmm. watched a couple of you know stats couple of highlights and just a lot of reports surrounding him I think I feel even his be... performances at the World Cup they were like mm-hmm. pretty impressive so yeah I yeah, agree yeah. with you yeah so probably he could be a a good signing but i'm not sure how much money arsenal still have to mm. spend you know having already shelled out a lot of money but the good part is and what i was also reading was uh, the declan rice money goes in a period of 24 months right where where they have Correct. 24 months to pay the 110 odd million that they've paid for them mm-hmm. so that might be a good thing 
but uh, yeah i think and at the same time one player that i feel you know did not get a lot of chances last year but i think could become very important next season is emil smith rowe you know when martinelli yeah. wasn't performing the uh, the last last season i think he was he was almost starting every game had a great mm-hmm. goal scoring record as well so he could also chip in in that you know number 10 role if havertz yeah, does not yeah. really work out so i think that is again one option that i have in mind when it comes to arsenal so summarizing that was my arsenal uh, you know ideal transfers or the transfers that they've done mm-hmm. anything that you would want to add here i think uh, i just feel that uh, maybe you know a couple of additions could be helpful you know given the fact that last season they struggled you know towards the end of the season even though they played only they didn't have didn't have any european football so now you add those extra you know uh, you know how many ever like, you know 10 15 games that they'll mm. play in the champions league and that too will be sort of towards the latter half of the season if they make it Correct. through to the latter stages um i think you know they'll end up playing sort of you know two games a week like you know every three days mm. they'll have a match so i think having a bigger squad is great but also having squad that has quality is super important like you know just having people for the sake of it is not of any use because we saw what happened with holding like you know you had a player who was there and he who he could fill in but the drop off there was so big that you know it it ultimately costed them the title so i think as of now arsenal their squad building has been pretty spectacular and i think now the pressure will be really on arteta to deliver with deliver. silverware be that the uh, premier league or at least one of the two cup trophies or you know a considerable run in the champions league so i think now he has no excuses in the sense that he's been giving he's been given everything that he needs so it's now time for him to deliver on uh, you know the investment from the management you know absolutely well put and i think that is where city have been absolutely brilliant yaar in mm-hmm. terms of even their squad depth they have such good players to replace everyone yaar who has a mahrez you know gundogan sometimes you know foden on the bench yaar alvarez on mm-hmm. the bench so i think that is a sort of bench and i think that is where all the other premier league teams fail even a liverpool yaar they have a very strong starting 11 but you know yeah. not not a good squad depth right so yeah make sense and i think okay costa give me your you know expected position that arsenal will end the premier league with in the next season what do you predict i think they're going to finish second again and maybe pick up uh pick up an fa cup because they have like strong history in that competition but i still feel you know if if city make the signings that i'm going to uh, recommend in in some time i i still feel like uh, they they they're an amazing team with the best manager in the world and add to that the experience that the team has i think is going to be is going to take like a herculean effort from arsenal to you know dethrone this city side cuz i think in my opinion they are like one of the greatest you know uh sides in the premier league i think at least i think without without discussion i think they are going to make it to everyone's top 3 at least so i think they they are in the running and it's going to be difficult for arsenal to dethrone this team you know going a different way and this might hurt a lot of arsenal fans i i think they'll just make it to the number 4 position i think the two manchester clubs uh-huh. along with liverpool would make the top 3 mm-hmm. and arsenal will have a close competition with chelsea and spurs so but i just see them making it to the top 4 uh, with no other trophy so that is my prediction for uh, arsenal next season uh, so yeah uh, mm-hmm. now switching from arsenal to the premier league champions we already talked a lot about manchester city cost of do you mm-hmm. want to take this ahead Yeah so um I think you know if you look at city squad well everyone talks about their depth if you just look at the raw numbers the squad there's been is it's pretty small there's just like I think the, a total of only 22 or 23 yeah, players featured for city in the entire season while if you look at the likes of uh, you know even united chelsea especially tottenham everyone fielded close to 
26, 27 players. So I think what I've seen from Pep is that he likes to have a squad really small, but of high quality. So you will have, you know, say, you know, roughly two players per position, but both of them are, you know, they could start over the other and there would be no drop off in the team at all. Because you could see, you know, Akanji play and Akanji be dropped the next game, Ake play, him not play, then Stones plays or Diaz plays. So, and you know, there's no real drop in quality. So, Correct. I think that is one great thing that uh, Pep has sort of inculcated into the squad. And apart from that, even the mentality that the squad has built up over the past few seasons, if you look at the battles for the title they've had with Liverpool, with Arsenal and, you know, even a couple of seasons back when Gurdwan scored the winner on the final against Aston Villa, they really just don't give up. You know, they are that that beast that just never dies. So, it's, it's going to be difficult for any team, you know, be it Arsenal, be it Liverpool or United for that matter, for them to dethrone the City because the flow that they are in and, you know, the crux that they've built of this squad, I think this really strong and I don't think the likes of Edison, Diaz... Um, even Rodri, Haaland or Foden, like these players who sort of form the spine of the team, they're not going anywhere and they're all, you know, pretty young as of now. They're all in their mid-20s. Mid -20s, so, correct. you know, you could see this team dominate for the next five years. So, I think it's if, scary if times Pep for the as the manager for City. That's true. But, you know, if you just look at the squad in itself, I think the quality of the players are as such that I don't think it ta it'll take like a genius to sort of get a tune out of these players. I think, you know, maybe someone like a Nagelsmann or like a Tuchel or mm. maybe even a Pochettino. I think they could do something with this team. I mean, certainly not as great of a job as Pep has done. But I think they could surely, you know, get a tune out of this team. Agreed, yeah. I think undoubtedly one of the best teams, you know. <laughs> When people will talk about Premier Leagues, right? Mm -hmm. Probably the Invincible along with, you know, Fergie's United in the last couple of seasons. Mourinho's Chelsea right. and then, you know, uh, Guardiola City would be definitely in the top mm -hmm. five, you know, of all time. Perfect. Uh, what, what transfers do you think? How do you think the business that they've already done, having lost a couple of players already? Mm -hmm. And how do you think City has panned out in the current transfer window? So, I think as of now, Gundohan has left and just, I think yesterday, uh, mm -hmm. Fabrizio confirmed that Mares has gone to Saudi. So, I think, uh, it, I mean, it is it is a loss considering, uh, especially Gundohan, you know, considering the role he played in, in City's title wins over the past few years. But I think City have always been clear that, you know, if a player doesn't want to stay at the club, they are they are open to leave. So, I think it's good, like, you know, you don't uh, want to have players who don't want to be at the club, who are not sort of, you know, giving it their everything, every match when they're at the club. So, I think it's a loss, but uh, I think City will cope with them, uh, cope with his loss. And Mares, on the other hand, I do feel that he was sort of being phased out. Like, I think he's reached, like, he's, I think he's around 32, so... I don't blame him for, you know, trying to secure that last big pay package because there's no way that City was going to pay him anything close to what he was going to earn at uh, in going to earn in Saudi. So, I, I don't blame their losses. But also, so far, if you see um, Gawadio's addition is spectacular addition because, firstly, he's I think he's a left-footed player, so he's going to be able to fill in at left-back when needed if City needs to play a, like a normal back four or... He can play in as the part of the back three that, you know, City plays in this new 3-4-3 system. Um, and apart from that, um, I think of, as for the wingers, um, the two players I sort of have in mind are uh, Coleman, like Kingsley Coleman from Bayern. I think he will be a spectacular addition. I think he has worked with Pep in the past and, you know, Pep will get the best out of him. And the other player in midfield, I feel uh, City would, uh, it would be a great addition is Gabri Vega from Celta Vigo. So, mm -hmm. I think he has been the breakout star in La Liga over the last, past year. He, I think he scored about 12 goals and got three or four assists. Um, I think what Kovacic uh, doesn't have that Gundogan has is goal-scoring ability. Like, if you see mm -hmm. Kovacic, I think in the past 
uh, I don't know, four or five years, he's barely scored about five or six goals. While Gundogan just, I think in the past, like three, four years, he's come up clutch with, you know, a good five, six goals in the mm. in in the pressure situations yeah. Uh, yeah. towards the end of the season. So, I think, you know, having someone of that sort could be a good addition. And plus, he's super young. So, you know, his value is only going to grow. And um, I think other than that, if there's another player who I am super excited by is Michael Olise from Palace. I think he is someone who, you know, I see in like a couple of years, one of the big boys, you know, pick him up for like a good 60, 70 million. Um, and the fact that, you know, he can play out wide as well as in midfield, I think it gives Pep that flexibility to tinker with his system. You know, mm-hmm. we've seen him, you know, invert his uh, fullbacks. I mean, you know, inverting wingers is nothing new, but we could see him play in midfield out wide, add some goals, some creativity and, you know, take some pressure off of De Bruyne because I think if you see in the past few years, even De Bruyne's legs are sort of going and, I think the the team needs to move away from depending on him as the sole creator in the team, and um, yeah, I think apart from that, I think Foden is going to have a really huge season. I think he's going to be played more in midfield, and I think Correct. he's going to be you know sort of handed the reins of the creativity in the team. So yeah, I think these are a couple of players I think would be a great addition for uh, City. So you know, what do you think? Yeah, I think. Um... Agreed when when you talk about Foden, I think Foden might take the you know Gundogan role, not exactly mm-hmm. what he does, but in just in terms of positioning, right? Because the 3 2 4 1 that they now play with, I think, offers them more defensive stability, wherein it uh, means like like someone like a Foden. Even we saw with Gundogan, yeah, he he were he was more involved in attacking and even in the final uh, third, yeah. more as compared to the last couple of seasons. So I think a definite transition would be Foden. But even I think for Kovacic, I think someone like a Guardiola would get the best out of him, even in the mm-hmm. attacking sense of thing, wherein, you know, I think he's a great footballer, great on the ball, right? Has a great footballing brain, but is more defensively inclined, right? So, uh, yeah. but I think Guardiola could be that change that even Kovacic need as, needs mm-hmm. as a player. So, that might be interesting. In terms of wingers, yeah, I think you've brought out some very interesting transfers. And, you know, and especially when you talked about a Michael Olise, I think he was, uh, ever since, you know, Roy Hudson took over the reign yeah. of Palace again, I think he was one of the shining stars for them. And even during Vieira's reign as well, I think he was one of the standout players for Palace. Correct. And, yeah. you know, obviously, I don't think so. It, this happening in the in the particular season, right? But mm-hmm. I think it would be a great shout. And, you know, someone, I some obviously, you know, plays on the other wing, but... The case of Allen and Maximin is very intriguing to me because I think he definitely has the quality to be a Premier top six Premier League player, right? For the top six clubs, but you know rumors are that he's moving to Saudi Arabia as well. Saudi, which, yeah, yeah, true. which is disappointing, very honestly, because I honestly imagine him to you know succeed at some at the Premier League. Mm-hmm. I think he's a very good footballer. So that was my shout out. Just, you know, even if that was a different side. Coman is a very interesting signing as well. I think uh, if 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 Coman is an option for City, they might exercise that bit as well. But I think one position, again, that is probably one of the more interesting ones for me would be the right back, right? Rumors mm-hmm. are, you know, Kyle Walker has accepted the initial, you know, offer by Bayern Munich and, mm-hmm. you know, uh, with the history that Guardiola has, I don't see Cancelo playing for City again, right? Uh, very, I would be very surprised, you know, knowing Pep, uh, I would be very surprised to see Cancelo playing for City again. So, right back would be a very curious situation where I can understand Kyle Walker's, you know, uh, desire to move abroad and move, mm-hmm. to, you know, to a different country. So, that is an, another situ- interesting situation that I see developing. But, you know, we could probably see someone like a Rico Lewis, you know, coming in. Yeah. Or, you know, yeah. I think uh, the thing was that, you know, if you see like City were completely moving away from having fullbacks uh, like at all. Because like, you know, yeah. I, if you saw like, you know, towards the end of the season, hmm. City were fielding basically four centre-backs in their right. back four. And then Stones used to just go into midfield. So, I think that... I don't know if uh, Kyle, I think that that's the issue with Kyle Walker because he wants to play a lot more and he is not 
like you know the structure and you know the way the team is evolving he, his position only has been phased out and that is you know because of his transfer to bayern that's why i, I thought of komen you know because if they could get like a part deal you know kyle walker plus 30 million or get some sort of deal in place for komen coming in the other direction i think it could be a great move but mm. i think the other thing that i read was city wanted like pavard in in like a swap oh, yes. correct, but correct, i think correct. that would be a horrendous move because i think there's just no need. need for him given that guardiol has just signed and we already have uh, stones there is akanji there is diaz so i don't think there's need for another uh, you know the center back slash full back player i think uh, you know and again you know pavard is no, is is not the best uh, when it comes to the final third or the in the attacking yeah. half of the yeah right so that 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 could be a bummer but you know when you're saying that you know they are usually fielding a, a back four of all center backs i think something a good right back comes into question when you are in the final you know stages of the champions league I think that is where a good quality right back would prove pivotal, right? Even I think just the pace of Kyle Walker, I think that is one quality. Yeah, that I think no that is that, the biggest loss. Yeah, yeah, you know the the run against Vinicius, where no one probably expected him to, you know, uh, get that. So that mm-hmm. is something that is you know slightly you know something that they'd miss. But apart from that, I think they 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 might have all the ends covered. Is what I feel. Yeah. I think the other, that's what, as you mentioned, I think losing Walker would be a huge loss for uh, loss for City because I think there's, you you know, however you coach a team, you can't coach someone to run faster than they can. Like, that is just, mm-hmm. like, sort of, you know, it's the ability that they innately have. So, I think, you know, someone like, especially in the latter stages of the Champions League, someone like a Kwarat Skelia or like mm-hmm. Vinny or Mbappe, if they come up against a centre-back, I think it's going to be a tough day for City because I don't see any fullback or any centre back for that matter have that raw pace that Walker has, and even at 33, like I think he is still as fast as he has ever been. Like he hasn't lost any pace, so I think like losing him would be a huge loss. But but again, you know, it's City's policy not to hold anyone back. So I think if he wants to go, sadly, I think City will have to let him go. Correct. So again, uh, that sort of winds up my, you know, predicted transfers or ideal transfers, if I may say, for mm-hmm. you know both Arsenal and City. Do, do you have any, 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 anyone else in mind when it comes to City? Uh, no, I think if they sign maybe just one winger and one central midfielder slash attacking midfielder, I think that would like you know complete the team as it is right now. So. I think, yeah, Komen and Gabri Vega, if I had to give two final shout-outs, they would be my two ideal signings. Uh, you know, if 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 I had an op- if I was Guardiola, I would definitely, you know, keep someone like uh, a Bernardo Silva. I'd just give him like mm. the money that he probably needs. Keep him for the left, uh, for the right wing position. Because honestly, I don't see an ideal fit for the right wing position for Man City at the True. moment. Could could be a could be a you know factor wherein Foden plays on the left wing, uh, Kovacic mm-hmm. takes place in the midfield, and that is the approach that they take. But an ideal mm-hmm. signing, especially in terms of winger, I don't have for City. Otherwise, I think they have all the aspects covered. I think they're just a brilliant team, and uh, I I predict them to win the Premier League again, not the Champions League, mm-hmm. but I I predict them to win the Premier League again next season. To everyone's surprise, but yeah, Costa, what, <laughs> what what do you think about their position for the next season? I think same. I agree with you. I think there's like, I think it's good. That's you know, as I mentioned, it's going to be really, really difficult for any team to keep up with uh, City, especially in the Premier League, because I feel again in the Champions League, you know, being like just a two ties, I think mm. you know a team can get one over City, but in a 38 game season, I think City's quality will just show and. They'll probably pick up another Premier League. But I think, you know, if, if the ingredients are there for them to go and, you know, sort of do like a three-peat like Madrid did. But that will be, you know, again, it will take something special from this uh, from the City side. But I think they're capable of it. And they certainly have the quality and the numbers to do th- something like that. So, 
I think yeah, just gonna be a repeat of uh, of last season. I think. I think when it comes to the Champions League, I somehow think they need another year for that complete. You know, getting the entire squad together with you know a bunch of mm-hmm. their stars leaving. Uh, Premier League, I think. Yeah, I think the Premier League will be decided when you know the top six play each other. I think mm-hmm. the rest of this. I think a lot of the top Premier League teams managed to do that, but I think a lot of the title will be decided of how the top six play against each other. So I think that could be a factor. So yes, uh, closing in on today's episode, Costa, thank you so much. I think we had a great discussion. I think everyone would, you know, I think everyone would sort of relate to some of the signings. Would be surprised by a bunch that, especially you had to offer when it comes to City <laughs> and. Uh, but yeah, I think thank you so much for joining in, Costa. Uh, really enjoy today's time and, you know, hoping to do another episode with you really soon. I think we're planning a Chelsea and a Spurs mm-hmm. episode next. So that would be uh, coming on Costa's channel. So everyone go and subscribe to Costa's channel. Follow him on Instagram and just stay tuned. A lot of good football content coming up your way. Thank you and cheers. Cheers. <laughs>